Math 1, Ready, Set, Go 9.7 and 9.8. We're kind of doing quite a bit here, so let's get going. So, finding distances and averages. The graph sh below shows several points in the line y equals x. Use the graph to answer each question. The vertical distance between point n and the line y equals x on the graph is 3. Okay, as you can see, 1, 2, 3. Okay, find all of the vertical distances between the points in the line y equals x. So that's 3. So B, 1, 2, 3. E, 1, 2, 3. D is 0. Oh, 0. G is actually also 0. That worked out, right? Because they're right on the line. I is 1. L is 1. And X is 1, 2. Okay, it says calculate the sum of all the distances you found. So let's add these all up. 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Find the average, so 13 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And 13 divided by 8 gives us 1.625. So, is the line shown on the graph the line of best fit? Okay, explain why or why not. All right. Well, we could also kind of think these are positive 3, positive 3, 0, negative 1, 0, negative 1, negative 3, and negative 1. So looking at this, these 3 and this one together would be negative 6. These two would be positive 6. So looking at that, to me, that kind of gives us a pretty good idea. Basically, this is saying the average distance for each of those points is 1.6, so fairly close. So I would say yes. I would say, yeah, it is, and that's what I would give. If you think it's not, tell me why and show me a better one. Okay, and then it says, estimate the correlational coefficient for this set of data points. Okay, so um, if we estimate this, it's pretty close, but not super close. I would maybe estimate, like, I mean, because you look at that, it's fairly close together. Which, looking at this, you know, you may think that there is a better line of best fit where you could make it go something like that. So, is it a good line of best fit? Possibly. Could you come up with a better one? You know, you might be able to as well. So, but let's take a look at this correlational coefficient. I'd probably place it somewhere between 0.75 and like 0.85. Okay. So let me grab a graphing calculator. I'll put this data in, and then we can see exactly what it is. So I typed it into the calculator, and here's what we came up with. So we can see here, once I did the stat calculation, 0.8587. So yeah, pretty close. All right. All right, number six and seven. So determine whether a linear or exponential model would be best. So looking at six, hopefully you notice that it's got that kind of curvature to it. So a line of best fit might look something like that, okay? Probably a little better. So that would be maybe starting here at 4 and then curling up like that, okay? So this would be exponential, okay? For 7, it's negative, probably a linear, right? So... That one would be linear, something like that. All right, now 8 says use the data in the table below to make a scatter plot. So it looks like on the x value we're counting by 2s. Okay, and we're counting by 20. Okay, something like that. So, money. At 1, we're up here at 200. At 3, about 175, so about right there. 4, 162, so about there. Then 7, down to 120, right about there. 10, we're at 87. 13, or 57, 
and then 20 were at 5. So like right there. Okay, so check. There's our scatter plot. B is the correlation of the graph positive or negative. Well, it's going down, so it's negative. Why is it negative? It's going down. As weeks go up, money goes down. See, what would you estimate the correlation coefficient to be? Well, this is in a pretty good straight line, so I'd probably put like 0.90. Okay, why? Because it's close, almost a line. So create a line of regression and write the equation. So maybe if we started at week 1, we had 200. So maybe we started at week 0, I don't know, 220 we'll say. So maybe we'd start right here. And then our slope would be going pretty close in line. Maybe something like that. So at week 20 on my line, I would be down at zero. Okay, maybe we need to adjust that a little better. So maybe I don't want to start at 20. Maybe I want to start a little lower and then try to match up better with those lines. Yeah, I don't know, something like that. So at 20, mine would be at zero. So my slope would be, so I'd go f of x equals my y-intercept, 220, minus my slope. I'm going down 220 as I go to the right, 20. So 220 over 20 would be 22 over 2, so it would be like 11x. So the slope means basically every week we lose eleven dollars okay so seems about right for my it says most school years are 36 weeks if the rate of spending is kept the same how much more money needs to be saved during the summer in order for there to be money to last all 36 weeks so as essentially how much more money do I need to have right there? So if I do 36 here, so negative 11 times 36, so I type that into a calculator, that would give me negative 396. So in order for my money to last all week, basically I probably need to start out at $400. So I would need to save up to $400 to last all 36 weeks. All right, let's now learn we're jumping to 9.8. So, questions 1, 2 says, describe the spread of the data set shown in each box plot shown below. Include the median, the range, and the inner quartile range. So, my low number is 3, high number is 9, so my range here would be 6. My inner quartile range would be from 4.5 to 7, so that would be 2.5, and my median is 5.5. Okay, now notice how this line is skewed more to the left, okay? That means that um, my center, this median, is 5.5. My spread is more, you know, it's pretty spread out because that's similar in nature, but it'd be a little skewed probably to the right, we'd say, okay? So you, you know, right, right about that. Whereas if we look at number two, Okay, my data is definitely skewed to the left because look at how much is here on this right side. Okay, median of 10.5, okay, 8.5 to 12 would give me 3.5 for my interquartile range and 10 for my total range, 3 to 13. So this one's more spread out with the data being more skewed to the left. Okay. So it says, if the box plots above represent the results of two different classes on the same assessment, which class did better? Number two, why? Because their median is higher and their majority of their data is between 9 and 13. Plus they had a higher score of 13 as opposed to just 9. Okay, number four. Two box plots with temperatures in two cities. Okay, so which city would be considered the coldest, D or E? So here's D, here's E. Okay. 
Well, obviously D, right? Why is it colder? Because the majority of its numbers are below E. Okay, its median is below E, and the majority, you know, its first, second, and third quartiles are all below and half of the fourth quartile. Do these cities ever experience the same temperatures? Yes. How do we know? They overlap, right? We look at right here to right here, they overlap. Now, do they do it during the same time of the year? Maybe. Is there a way to know the exact temperatures for any given day from the box plots? No. Okay, these are just temperatures. They don't tell us a day. What advantage, if any, could a histogram of temperature data have over a box plot? Well, that would show us the number of times we had that temperature, okay, and the temperatures around it, so it would give us probably a better idea of how warm or cold it will be. All right, let's take a look at the set. Okay, so... Um, we've got some scatter plots and have a regression line. Okay. So what it wants us first to do is to mark the average. Okay. That x bar and x, x bar x, x bar y means that, um, or x bar y bar. I'm saying it weird. We find the averages. So all we find all the x values. So we've got two, four, five, seven. 9, 12, and 16. So I add those all up. So I go 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 12 plus 16. That gives me 55. Then I divide it by 7, which is the number of items, and I get for my x value 7.857. So a 7.86, we'll say. Okay. Then I do it for my y values. So we've got 1, 6, 15, 17, 25, 27, and 30. So I add those all up. 30 plus 27 plus 25 plus 17 plus 15 plus 6 plus 1. And I divide that by 7. I get 121 divided by 7, so I get... 17.285, so 29. So if I plot that, 7.86, 17.89 would be pretty close to about where that line is. Okay? Then we create a residual plot. Okay? So I find the distances here, right? So that's 1, 2, 3. So 2, I go down 3. So right there. Okay? because I went below the line, then at 4, we go up 1, 2, 3, 4. We go up 4. Okay, at 5, I go up 1. That was that one. At 7, I go down 1, 2. At 9, we're right on the x-axis. Then at 12, we go down 3. So 12, I go down 3. And then at 16, we go up 1. Okay. So do our numbers look fairly random? Yeah, we're kind of bouncing back and forth, so that's a good sign. Um, they're pretty close together, so that means we're going to have a higher correlational coefficient. It's going down, so it's negative, so my correlational coefficient might be like negative 0.85. Okay, then we do the same thing for the second one. So, looks like we go up about half on 3, so at 3, we go up about half. Okay, so that's 3. And then at 4, we go up... At five, okay, and that was thirty three, then two thirty fives, or thirty seven, thirty seven. Okay, up five, 
we go down not quite a half even. It's pretty close to the line. Okay. Then at here we have 40. Here we have 7. We go down about 2, a little past 2. That's 7. So like right about there. Okay, then we've got 44, an 8, a 9, and 46. But this one goes down about 1, this one goes down about 1.5. So at 8, we're down about 1, 9, about down 1.5, and, and then we go up 3 at 10. Okay, so notice that plot isn't quite as good as our. B1 kind of has this shape to it. So um, this line isn't the best line of fit. It's still pretty close together, so I'd probably go, it's going up, so positive maybe 0.75. Okay, and then to find these, right, we have 10, we have 53. So I add up, I go 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10. And divide that by 7, so 46 divided by 7. So for my x bar, I get 6.57. Then for my y's, I go 33 plus 37 plus 37 plus 40 plus 44 plus 46 plus 53. I get 290, divide that by 7, and I get 41.43. So I graph that point, 6.57. 41.43 is about on the line, again, right about there, okay? And that was my correlational coefficient. All right, last page. We got everything, right? Last page. The following graphs are residual plots. Analyze the residual plots to determine how well the prediction line is, okay? Well, looking at this, see how it's all up here, then all down here? Um, this one got shot clear up there. I'm guessing that might be a mistake. So my analysis is that point 13, 3.25 appears to be a mistake. And I have a pattern from positive to negative. So my guess is my line of best fit, however the scatter plot looks, I'm too far below and then too far above. I would want those kind of bouncing back and forth to get it to work. So not a good line of best fit. It starts out being too low, then too high. Okay, number eight. So now I look at this one and notice how we're kind of bouncing around back and forth. Okay, so for me, that's actually what you want to see. Okay, the scatter plot is pretty, you know, the line it's pretty spread out um, because you're having such high distances here. So I'd have a lower, you know my correlational coefficient would probably be lower. No scatter plot is scattered, that's a good way of saying it, right? So, um, however, my line of best fit looks pretty good. Because there's no pattern. Okay? Alright, there we go, guys.